All right. Well, how you doing, everyone? This is Reverend Jess Fogelsong from Touch by God Church, and uh, we're good to see everybody today. We have a, a great message today, and it's uh, and the message is simply called Christmas. Does God endorse Christmas? Is God really advertising the Christ? All right, let's get into it. All right. Now I love Christmas and the entire Christmas seasonal event. It is a wonderful time of the year. It is a time for all to come together and share a goodwill, warmth, and love and celebration of the birth of the Christ child. In a way, it is God advertising His one and only Son the Christ Jesus. At least that is what I what it used to be. Sadly, times have changed though. It seems that it seems though that through the years and through the years the meaning of Christmas has been altered. Today you hear more happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. It is a holiday tree rather than a Christmas tree. The emphasis is more toward commercialization and commercialism than spiritualism. We have literally taken God and Jesus out of the equation, making it more a time for who receives the highest sales or who receives this or that. And what am I? What am I going to get out of it? When, when was the last time you experienced strolling carolers singing Christmas songs outside your front door? How often do you see a nativity scene on display at your town square? It is simply not done anymore for fear of vandalism or reprisals. Now, has Christmas lost its true meaning? So what does God, the Father, what does He think of, about all of this? Has He gone south? Or is He still with us? Does He tolerate the fact that in many ways we have turned our backs on Him? Does all of this surprise Him? Well, actually, actually, our Father does understand and tolerate our indignant attitude toward the celebration of his son's birthday. He understands that Satan is quietly and very subtly working to influence the people of this planet toward his ways and transforming Christmas and all that it stands for into something negative. He has certainly succeeded in twisting Jesus Christ into a negative swear word. He has twisted it into a negative swear word. As well as God's name, it is the colloquial phrases. It is the these phrases quote God damn unquote or for Christ's sakes, quote, unquote. Very subtly and quietly, we seem to be moving away from God. And it really shows during Christmas, although this isn't the first time. Humanity has turned away from God many times in history. And for some crazy reason, he keeps giving us a second chance. And so, are we moving away from God? Well, doesn't it seem like it to you? We are not allowed to pray in public, certainly not in school, any school. Our government has declared that we separate church and state, that we must not offend those who do not believe in a God. In fact, 
most politicians shy away from using God in their campaigns, implying that if they did, it would be their downfall. And technically speaking, um, when the government has declared that we separate church and state, if you read the fine print in the Constitution, it separates church from the state, from the government. So if you get a chance, take a look at that. Always read the fine print and take a look. Don't just take people's word for it, especially um, a government that, uh, that tries to impede the uh, churches and spirituality. Uh, the information comes from God through His Holy Spirit. All right. In fact, <clears throat> just recently in the uh, in the recent uh, Democratic, uh, I think it was 2012 convention, God was booed loud and clear, heard by millions who watch, and I am sure heard by God in heaven, heard by Himself. The only place one can hear the name God is in church or in your own home. It is a sad commentary, knowing that we were all formed on the virtues of a moral law, a belief in a creator, a belief that God and belief that mankind is endowed by someone greater than themselves. God has a plan and has implemented it through His Son, Jesus the Christ. No matter what direction we choose, God is there to redirect you to Him. He knows your weaknesses, your frailties. He understands the human plight, the human need to always be first and in charge of itself. Why do I have to bow down to some all supreme being, this is what, uh, says mankind, or the arrogance of mankind. That is th their attitude, unwilling to accept the fact that he himself is a created being, <clears throat> that all that he is and all that is around him was created by a Father in heaven, a spiritual Father in heaven. Mankind has lost due to original sin and could have been lost forever. But God chose to salvage each and every one of us through a representative, a redeemer. It was the only way to bring us home. An illustration would be found in the New Testament story of the prodigal son in Luke 15 verses 11 through 32. The prodigal son who had been lost but found his way home and was warmly greeted with open arms by his father. And he saw him from a distance and welcomed him with open arms. A type of who we are, humanity lost. But through the Father's grace and love was welcome home again. Another illustration is written in the Old Testament. The nation of Israel, lost and enslaved by the Pharaoh in Egypt, was freed by the Father through a type of Savior in the name of Moses who led his people into the wilderness for 40 years, then finally crossing the, the Jordan River into the land of promise, the land of milk and honey, which symbolically is a type of heaven or kingdom of God. God's plan has always been to free us from Satan's grip. We were enslaved. We were in slavery. Illustrated in history in today's slavery of 
of mankind and our, in the history of our slave, our slavery. And of course, uh, uh, illustrated through types of redeemers such as Abraham Lincoln to free the slaves illustrated in the larger picture God sent a redeemer the Christ Jesus to free the slaves mankind that this is the true this is the original freedom from enslavement from Satan yes and now we are in the wilderness making our way home to his open arms. Mankind had been in the wilderness after the, after the cross event, after the resurrection event. It was this interim time is, is time to, to bring everyone, as many as possible, home. So, uh, as we uh, head home to um, the promised land, heaven, God is there with open arms like the prodigal son, making our way home with his open arms to the true heaven, <clears throat> to mankind's true home. Yes, it seemed like we are distancing ourselves from our Father God. It, seemed, it may seem like we are distancing ourselves from our Father, but in reality we are moving every day closer and closer to his loving arms and care. Our castaway status will be no more. We will be back in his main camp safe and secure. Due to the man, the, the God-man, the Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, and, of course, a representative in the face of the Father. So no matter what, the, what agnostics, atheists, or anyone else may want us to believe, they are fighting a losing battle. God is tenacious. He is relentless. He is determined to bring us home, as many of us as he can persuade. He will bring those people, as many of us, to the Christ Jesus. And through him, we will take that journey home. Now he, Christmas, now he sees Christmas as a special event, and if you will, an advertisement of his son, the Christ. Christmas, his word, his name is written in Christmas. His Son for all of us to enjoy and so Christmas is, is a time of enjoyment, time of family, time of people, uh, uh, human beings coming together and to reflect and to the uh, on the immaculate birth of the Prince of Peace, the immaculate birth of the Prince of Peace. We celebrate that. Uh, we celebrate the Christ child. He, he became the Redeemer, the newborn King Emmanuel over 2,000 years ago. God bless all of you. Alright, what a great message uh, for Christmas and uh, we'll stop here and um, if you have any questions, any uh, uh, you know, the things you don't understand, please stop by at touchbygodchurch.com. We are online, and uh, there will be uh, information there for you. Stop by. God's blessing to you and yours today.